Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about swap space. Now, you're probably wondering why this question has come up. And the answer is I just want to talk a little bit about it because really the question isn't whether or not you need swap space, but whether or not you need swap space if you have a ton of memory. So if you're running a system, I guess before we get into this, we should talk a little bit about what swap space is. It's a little complicated, so just uh, just bear with me. I'm going to try to simplify it as much as possible. Uh, swap space is basically a partition on your hard drive that allows your system to save stuff to it after you've used all of the RAM in your system. So uh, if you're new to Linux and you don't, I'm assuming at least that you know what RAM is versus ROM. Okay, so basically RAM is the memory that stores things that are running on your system and gets flushed out every time your computer gets sh shut off. And then you know, your hard drive, which is, is where the data is stored permanently and obviously can't be flushed when just when your com computer is shut off. Usually you we're talking about uh, your hard drive storage or whatever is very cheap and very large, whereas you probably only have 4, 8, or 16 gigabytes of you know RAM and there's a chance that the more programs you use, the more tabs you have open in Chrome or Firefox, the closer you get to using up all of your RAM. And if you were to use up all of your RAM, you would need, at least on Linux, you'd need a swap file. And what that would do is once you've reached the point of using your four gigabytes of RAM or whatever, your system would then be able to store some of that data onto your hard drive and treat it kind of like it would is uh, you know, memory itself. It's slower, obviously, than memory, and I don't really need, need to discuss the technicalities of why it's slower, uh, but it, it allows you to have uh, technically more RAM in your system, or you know, con virtual RAM, I guess, that would allow so that you can actually keep working without having to worry about you know your computer just you know crashing or no uh, applications being able to launch. Now, if you've used Windows, Windows does not have a swap file mechanism, uh, and <laughs> I don't know if it still happens, but when I used to use Windows, every once in a while I'd use up all of my memory on a like a laptop, and you and you try to open up a new tab or you try to open up a new program, and Windows would actually pop up saying no more memory available. Uh, please please free up some memory. Uh, that's not on Linux. If on Linux, if you have a swap file uh, available, that will only happen if you've used up both your memory and your swap file. So that is what swap a swap file is. It's been around for a long time, and it was much more relevant when uh, computers only had a little bit of RAM. So if you only had, um, you know, like one gigabyte or two gigabytes or four gigabytes of RAM, swap file was much more important than these days where the average computer now has at least four. I mean, that's usually the bare minimum, and usually eight. Eight is usually, it seems to be the spot where most manufacturers have settled on as kind of the standard amount of RAM for a computer. And, and we're seeing more and more now with 16 gigabytes of RAM. On my computer here that I use as a daily driver, I have 64 gigabytes, and that's just because I do video editing and stuff like that. But even I, you know, with all the stuff that I have running right now, and I'll talk about it, in a, you know, probably in a few minutes, I'm only using like right now like 11% of my RAM, and I have a ton of stuff running. Uh, I never use all of my RAM. So do I, the person who has 64 gigabytes of RAM, need a swap file? And the answer is maybe. Uh, if you have a ton of RAM and you don't plan on using Hibernate, the Hibernate function, which I'll talk about in a minute, then you don't need a swap file for the most part. I mean, it doesn't hurt anything to have one, uh, even if it's just a small one, uh, but you don't actually need it um, because you're never going to hit that threshold where, you, oh my goodness, I've used all 64 gigabytes of my RAM and now I need another 64 gigabytes of swap file. That's not likely to happen. Uh, unless you're doing something crazy <laughs> that you probably shouldn't be doing, uh, you know, with, with your system. I mean, if, if you're doing something that requires you to have all 64 gigabytes of your memory you running you in use in usage at the same time, I don't know what to do for you, man. You got you got other problems, <laughs> and you're obviously doing things that are outpacing the ability of your machine. You need something new. And then you need to bike a Mac Pro it has like 1.5 terabytes or something and go with that. So if, if if for the most part, the answer to the question is, do you still need a need swap space if you have a ton of memory? And I would say no. 
Now, the caveat to that is if you want to use the uh, Hibernate. Uh, now, Hibernate just basically means when you you put your machine into Hibernate mode, whatever, your computer will actually take everything that's in RAM and store it on your hard drive somewhere. Now, Windows does this in a weird way. Uh, I don't really understand it, but in Linux, uh, if you want to use Hibernate, you have to have a swap file in order to take everything from RAM and put it into on your hard drive. That's where Linux stores it, is on a swap file or a swap partition. If you don't have it, then your then Hibernate won't work. So if you use Hibernate, you need a swap file. Now the question is, then, I guess we have two questions. What is the the lowest amount of RAM you'd use and still need a swap file? And I would say if you have 8 gigabytes of RAM, you need a swap file. I mean, you do. And I would say have an 8 gigabyte swap file. That way you, you can double it. If you have 16... I would say you still need a swap file. I would say you need at least four gigabytes for your swap file, maybe eight. Um, they say about 20%. I'm going to go ahead and say 50%. Unless you're at eight, and then I'd say I'd say go ahead and double it. Now, if you have more than 16 and you're using Hibernate, it's once you get past 16 that you can really kind of forget the swap space unless you use the Hibernate function. And... I I will just say this out loud and just say I these are my opinions. If you look on the internet, if you look if you go through and Google do I need swap space, you'll find 20 million different answers. Most people most uh Linux users will agree, the ones that have used it for a while, that having a swap space or swap partition, swap file doesn't hurt anything. So if you have space on your hard drive, create one. It doesn't hurt you anyways. As long as you don't create it too big, it's not going to prevent you from storing a bunch of stuff on your drive. And it is kind of like it's kind of like when you buy insurance. You don't want to have to use it, but it's kind of a peace of mind thing that you know that it's there. And that's a good thing, right? And chances are, though, if you have like a really small hard drive, you also probably don't have a very large amount of RAM. So... It's kind of a, a, a paradox there because you you know you want to have a b bigger swap file, but you probably don't have a bigger you know drive or whatever. Buying a bigger hard drive is cheaper than buying more memory, and there's most computers don't have a limit to what how much of a hard drive you can put in them. So you could put a two terabyte hard drive in a little laptop, uh, whereas in your the motherboard in that laptop might limit you to eight gigabytes of RAM. So you could therefore create a bigger swap file by getting a bigger hard drive, whereas you can't necessarily always uh, upgrade your RAM. And a lot of times in these newer laptops, your RAM is soldered on. So once you, whatever you bought when you, whatever, whatever you configured when you bought the, your laptop, that's what you're stuck at forever and ever until you get a new laptop. So a swap file then is probably even more important, uh, especially if you're at that eight or even 16 gigabyte threshold, uh, because you know you can't actually go through and say you want to. I'm consistently using eight point you know whatever gigabytes of RAM, and I need that extra you know cushion just in case. Uh, you can't actually go through go to Best Buy and buy yourself new more memory. So the swap space actually becomes more important in that scenario. So that's just a very brief uh, explanation of what swap is and what and answering the question of whether or not you need. A swap file or swap partition. Uh, now, I don't have one on my computer at all. Now, this is not because I don't have enough hard drive space. It's not because uh, I don't think it's a good idea. It's mostly because I didn't think I needed one. Because um, I have 64 gigabytes of RAM. I never, ever, ever use all of them. All of that RAM. I mean, never. I mean, I could have Steam going playing a game pause in the background. I could have all my Firefox stuff open. I can have, um, you know, right now I also have OBS and Audacity running. And a lot of times I do that even when I'm gaming. Uh, you know, I have Notion, I have Todoist, I have Discord, all this stuff open up all at the same time. And like I said, right now, I'm using 11% of my 64 gigabytes. And uh, I could even be rendering, rendering a video in the background you know, in Caden Live, and probably only go get up go up to thirty five or you know forty percent. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen it go over fifty. Maybe one time when I was building a City Skylines video, did it go over like thirty gigabytes? I think maybe. 
and city skylines is notoriously not well optimized so i don't have one for that reason and i don't use hibernate so i don't i really didn't think i needed one so that's just you know my situation if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down uh, let me know in the comments uh, if you have a swap file and if you ever have actually had to use it, I'm very curious. Well, because I have had I have computers actually still now that have swap files, uh, and I don't know that I've ever actually driven my computer to actually having to use it. Um, maybe I just don't. I'm just not a power user enough. Anyways, uh, let me know about that in the comments. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing, uh, going to Patreon.com/LinuxCast, or following us on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. We really do appreciate everybody who subscribes. So uh, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. And if you su could subscribe, I'd be very much appreciative of that. Uh, and I'll, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.